What's up, gang? This is Kaz with Marauder Music. Um, real quick, I'm going to do a rundown on my Linux install that I use for my recording and uh, going to cover a couple points that hopefully will help you with some bumps in the road that you might come across. So first off, I'm using Ubuntu Studio. I'm using the 2.1.10. This is the KDE Plasma environment. I use this because I like the Plasma environment and I like the regular updates that I get. <clears throat> Previously, I used to use the LTS and I liked the KDE better and I think I didn't get updates as often. So this is what I'm using. <clears throat> if you're gonna do this kind of install, you need to get the, um, you know, you need to download it, you need the ISO file, you need to do a bootable stick and all that sort of stuff. We're not going to cover that here. That's kind of basic sorts of things that you can find elsewhere. Um, the next thing is, you know, I grabbed a copy. Oh, wait, let's, let's back up for a second. Another important thing is after you get it installed, I'm using a small Behringer USB interface. It is a, let me grab the model number. It's the U... MC 2020 HD interface. It's a little two channel interface USB. Studio control. So this is kind of like I think of it as my sound center. Right away, as soon as you get your install, you plug in your MIDI device. You're going to go here. The important settings are is the master. So you're going to select your USB device as the master audio device. That's This will take care of itself. And you also want to bridge this and we'll do that. If Jack isn't running, you want to go ahead and start it. Typically, I'd never have to mess with this anymore after that. The next thing you want to do, you want to go ahead and go to like watch a YouTube video, make sure you're getting audio. Because if you're getting audio, that means that the bridge that you bridged is working into Jack Audio if you can hear the audio. If, if your video doesn't give you sound or play right, it's because it's locked up because maybe Jack didn't start. So there's that. Um, so the next thing you want to do, <clears throat> you want to grab your copy of Linux Reaper, you know, download that. There's an awesome video, not going to go through it here. You can see this right here. You know, you can search for this video. I'll put a link in the description. This gentleman did an awesome job of showing me how easy it was to install my native Reaper into my new Ubuntu setup. And then so you will then open Reaper after it's installed, um, you'll have to go to your options. Oh, wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's back up for a second. So, you know, we were we were getting ready to go down the path of going into Reaper and setting up, you know, your, your options. Obviously, you know, you got your audio, your VST files. Right now, by the way, I'm using Pulse Audio. The only reason why is because for OSB Studio, for me to do this video, to get it to bridge in, that's what I have to select. But normally, I will keep this set to Jack Audio, and I don't have any problems with it. <clears throat> um, as we jump around randomly here, and I keep talking past myself, um, the other thing that you're going to want to do in here, you, this is where you can find your latency setting, your buffer size. So if you're using guitar plugins, this will matter, um, you know, because there'll be delay, obviously, the higher you go. And you can see I, I'm defaulting to 256. I really don't have that much delay. Um, I'm using Audio Assault plugins. I can have like eight to 10 of them open in one session and I don't have any problems really. Um, if I do have a hiccup or a problem, I can go increase this when I'm mixing down. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, that'll fix it. So there's that. Um, but so one of the problems you're going to run into, especially, um, you know, I saw somebody had some problems getting native um, Ugratone drums installed. And we're going to cover that. So when you go into preferences in here and you go to VST, so what Reaper did, they created a default folder that it, it would do, and it, it's looking for a .vst and a .vst3. As you can see, I, I've added my username in here, but I think initially it's just looking for these .vsts. So... Um, if you're not familiar with Linux, the dot in front of a folder means it's a hidden folder. So let's keep that in mind as we go look at our folder. This is Dolphin. This is the equivalent of File Explorer in Windows, if you're familiar with that. 
So you're going to go over here, you're going to click on options, you're going to go show hidden files. And what I did, the, they're kind of grayed out to let you know that they're hidden, but I've created a .vst and a .vst3. I did that for simplicity's sake because um, I can tell you if you're new to Linux, getting the whole file management thing, it can be a bit confusing. Um, so I did that. Um, and as you can see, my Ugratones here, I'm going to talk about this for a second. So if you've gotten Ugratone drums and you've gotten the, the Linux version of it and you've gotten the zip file and you've opened it all up, what you don't want to do, it doesn't work, is the .so file. So um, hopefully you're following along here. So a .dll for a VST file, uh, you guys that have been in the realm of messing with DAWs know that, you know, your .dll is your, your, D, uh, your VST file and it needs to be in the right folder and you need to, if you've gone through the whole rigmarole of getting Reaper the right file extension so it scans and finds it and all that. Anyways, the .so is the equivalent of your DLL file. So what does not work is... If you put the, the .so file right in this um, VST folder, it won't pick it up. It doesn't work. It You need to drag the entire file structure that you get with Ugratone drums. And that is what's going to kill you if you can't get it to work properly. So if you copy that whole, this whole file structure as you unzip it, put it in your VST folder. As you can see, I chose the VST3 it will pick it up so and then of course you need to get your um, preferences you know you need to get your your paths correct in here and anybody that's messed with Reaper before you're familiar with this and then so now that you've, you've done that and, you, and for uh, you know you can unhide hide this as you need so you don't have to look at all those hidden folders in there so there's that um, and then hopefully when you open Reaper um, it will you know, it will pull up your, you can see I have Ugratone here. What I will tell you, um, because this is Linux, and I believe Ugratone released the Linux version of these without any kind of warranty. It was kind of, hey, here, here it is in Linux, and go forth and do great things. So when you first add this plugin, it will take some time to load. Another complication that you're going to have, and I'll, I'll try and explain this. I, hopefully it makes sense. So there's different parts to the Ugratone drums. There's the actual engine itself that runs. <coughs> Excuse me. And then it has to load the sound library. Now, by default, you can see here the slash OPT. It's this, so this is what it's looking for for the location for the the sound files to load for the sampler so this is important as well this is another linux hurdle that you have to learn and be aware of the the slash opt folder in linux that's kind of the equivalent to your programs folder that you would think about in um, windows so where is that located so that's going to be located in your root directory. Think of this kind of as like your C drive. So you go in this folder. This is where you're going to put your library files because this is what it's looking for to load the various drum kits that you have may have purchased. And again, you want to keep the file structure in here as it extracted. There's some conflicts in here. It's a little bit confusing because you can see, well, wait a minute. This says it's the, the Cult Drums 2, but th this was Riot Drums. Th this is how they have currently the folder structure from Ugratone set up. But if you do it this way, when you go in your engine and you want to open another, because you go to Browse. Oh, the other thing I found is the auto locate. I didn't have luck at first with this. I haven't played with it since I've done the folder structure. But now you can see I can browse, and it's browsing in this OPT folder. And now I can select the other drum kit that I may want. So let's say I want this. So I say OK. So now it's loading. 
Now it's not happy because I guess it didn't find the samples correctly. And again, another Linux hiccup. It's a little bit annoying. Hopefully they will fix it. But I have to go down here under my kit selection and actually select it. Ah, now it's loading properly and it's going. And I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to share this video with Ugratone. Uh, possibly I could be doing something wrong. Um, maybe this is just kind of the state of where it is in development at this point. But I'm just sharing with you the little workarounds that I did. I mean, this works for me. Um, but yeah, you have to wait for it to load. And then hopefully, so we can hear our, our drums playing now. So it works. And then, of course, you can load your MIDI and stuff in. Um, but so now you can see my, my original kit that I had previously loaded. It's not there anymore. That's all of these kits. So I have to go back to my browse. I have to load my sample library. Then I have to go down here. Is it as smooth as, uh, you know, maybe a tune track thing or something? Eh, maybe not. But, um, hey, in tune track, there was things that were a little confusing as well. So um, basically for me, though, once I get a kit that I liked and I'm working with, it stays loaded. I, you know, looking to Reaper templates, you know, I save my template. Everything's loaded up. I bring it up. I'm ready to roll. Don't have any problems. So hopefully that answers the question on how to get that to work in Reaper. Um Another thing on the OPT file, let's talk about that again. So um, as you can see, my audio assault plugins are hanging out here too. Now, if you're going to use audio assault, I'll have to do a different video because I don't quite remember. Um, depending on their plugin, they, they had some earlier ones that you had to physically put here. Then they had an installer that automatically installed. But the bottom line was you had to open this folder up because this if when you're in root in Linux this is kind of locked down this folder so that you can't change it so you had to go to properties and you have to go to permission and you have to have the dolphin running in your admin mode by default it is not in admin mode you can do some Googling on that, but there is a plugin extension for Dolphin to allow it to run, and you can add it to where you can. Um, I can't remember where it is for this video, guys, but there was something in here that I enabled to allow me to give full permission to this folder. So you might ask, well, why do I have to give full permission to this folder? Because Audio Assault's plugin requires you to enter an email address that you registered, and they have to register either online or you have to get a file. But the bottom line is that plugin needs to write to hear your license to open up the plugin. And that's the reason why this folder needs to have full permission. Um, again, you, you can do some searches on how you get full permission in, in Dolphin or whatever version of Linux you're using. But bottom line is you need to open up permission on this folder. Again, it's like your programs folder in Windows. Things need to be able to read and write to it. It's locked down by default because this is Linux. This is one reason why, you know, Linux is possibly a little bit safer. Um, that's going to be about it for this video. Um, covered a lot of stuff. Um, you know, I just wanted to throw that out there. You know, this is what I'm doing to run Linux and, and Reaper native and my drum plugin native. Um, there's some other things I have going on that, you know, maybe I'll do a video on later. I'm using uh, the plug. I don't even ask me to pronounce this, but this is a, a, um, you have to load Wine. Some of you guys may have heard about Wine in Linux, but there's a small process you can go through. You load Wine, um, and then you can load a Windows plugin, and then there's a thing called Yawbridge, which basically converts the Windows DLL into the .so file, and then you can open that up in Reaper as if it was a native plugin. Um, there's some command line stuff and everything, but you know that that's for another video. Um, one other thing I want to cover. So previously in Linux and Ubuntu, they've changed the name of this. This is basically if you're online, you can open this up, and it allows you to search for files and utilities that exist that you can install on your computer, and you can uninstall. So it's kind of like your your 
I forgot what it's called in Windows, but you know, your apps thing where you can add and remove apps, you can search for apps. So obviously if you need to install Wine, you can search for Wine, and then you can see, now it's trying to load them. My connection's a little slow at the moment. So I could install these. This one's already installed because I installed it. I could remove it here. So uh, previously, it was a little confusing in um, Linux. That's one of the things that drove me away was you people, you know, you go online, this isn't working, that isn't working, and then somebody gets tell you you need to install all these packages, and then you're opening up a command prompt, and you're just randomly entering all this stuff, and miles of files are installing, and you don't know what you're installing, where it's going. Um, this is one of the reasons why I'm on Linux now. Things have cleaned up a little bit since then to where you don't have to be an IT professional to get this stuff to work anymore. Um, there's just some minor hurdles at the moment. I think it's going to increase and get better as time goes by. Um, yeah, so there's that. So hopefully that'll get you started. I mean, if you can... If you can get over those two hurdles, you know, you get a drum thing, you going in, you get your guitar plugins working. So uh, thanks for watching. Um, I hope that helps. Take care.